Welcome to the Listing Presentation Masterclass. Yay, I'm excited that you are here. And so get a notepad, get a pen, and be ready to take some notes. I recorded a little clip of a video. It was a promo video for this webinar. And I said something on that video. And I want to start with this conversation. I'm going to give you seven steps today. And you want to be here all the way to the end because all seven of them are important. Otherwise, there would be six, not seven. So you don't want to miss any of it. I want to start by what I mentioned in this promo video for this webinar. Write this down. Write this quote down. The seller is a yes. When you, when you knock on that door and you walk through the door, they are a yes unless you turn them into a no. And what I mean by they are a yes, they are willing to consider listing with you, otherwise you wouldn't be there. They wouldn't have given you an appointment. So they said, yes, come here, show me why. Tell me why I should pay you a commission to handle the sale of one of my biggest assets. This is a big deal. Selling, listing a home, helping a seller with the sale of their home, it's a big deal for people. And yes, there are a lot of for sale by owners out there and a lot of people can think, think they can sell it themselves. And in this market, there's no question that if they put a certain price on a, listen, it, regardless of the market, let me back up. This is not about FISBOs. At the, at the right price for, a private seller, anybody can sell on their own, even in a buyer's market where there's a ton of inventory. Anything can be sold given a certain price. Can they sell it and actually end up with more money than if they hired you? That is really the question, okay, that a FISBO, that you need to answer for a FISBO. But the point is, whether it's a FISBO, an expired, a neighborhood call, a referral, I don't care where this lead came from, you got yourself an appointment. That seller is willing to hire you unless you really mess this up, okay? Because if they weren't willing to consider listening with you, you wouldn't be there. So I actually did something really fun this morning because I want to give you a visual for what, what is at stake when you walk into a listing appointment? You see this? It's not play money. This is actual $100 bills and there's $10,000 here. I went to the bank this morning. Some of them are like the old ones, but most of them are the brand new ones, 10 grand. When you walk into a listing appointment, this money is sitting on the table. For some of you, this is your average commission, $10,000. For some of you, it's 20 or 30. It's even more than this. But this is what is at stake. And I want you to think about this because someone, an agent, will have this, this money in their bank account. I don't care what the seller tells you. I don't want to pay a commission. I don't want to list with an agent. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm taking it off the market, whatever the objection may be. They gave you an appointment because they're a yes. They're willing to consider listing with you. And they're going to list with somebody. If it's not you today, right now on this appointment, this money is going to go in somebody else's bank account and not yours. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes? So I want you to write this down. Write this quote down. It's one of my favorite quotes. Luck happens when preparation meets opportunity. So when you think about this $10,000 average commission, all this money right here, I want you to look at it. And I want you to envision it being deposited in your bank account, your bank account. It's there. It's yours. Are you going to allow another agent to take that money from you? 
Because right now, today, if you do your job correctly, if you do what you're supposed to do, if you show up in the way that you're supposed to show up, it's yours. Or somebody else is going to take it from your bank account and deposit it in theirs. So write this down, right? It's a question. And even after this webinar, I'm going to give you a lot of answers, but I want you to think about this, okay? Because you gotta, you got to make some changes because there's just too much money, too much money out there for you in this market, in every market. What do you need to learn? That's a question. How do you need to prepare? And who do you need to be? I have my, I have notes here, okay? I don't want to forget anything that I want to tell you. So if you see me looking to the side, it's my iPad. What do you need to learn? How do you need to prepare? And who do you need to be at this listing appointment right now? So you don't lose your $10,000 commission to another agent. Here's another question for you. What? is the seller looking for? What is this seller looking for? Write this down. I'm gonna tell you what every seller is looking for. They're looking to sell their home for the most money possible. I don't care what they tell you. They wanna sell it for the most money possible. And they wanna know they're not leaving any money on the table. They want to sell it in the least amount of time. Now, least amount of time. Every seller's timing, motivation and timing is not the same. Clearly, some people have more urgency to sell than other people, but nobody has their house for sale. And they want to they want it to just take as long as possible. You know, I could sell it in a week, but I want it to take a year. No, they want to sell it in the least amount of time and with the least amount of hassle. Write those three things down. That's what every seller wants. Now, I want you to think about this. That is their goal in the sale of this home. That is an aggressive goal. Selling for the most money in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle is an aggressive goal. And it requires an aggressive agent. Now, some of you may be new to real estate or newer, and you haven't been on a lot of appointments and you don't have a lot of experience. I get that. I've been there. Here's the challenge. If you, if the seller senses fear and doubt in you, fear that you're not sure you could take the listing, doubt that you could sell it for the most money in the least amount of time, you know, the market is hot, if they could sell themselves, well, you know, there's other agents that have more experience, they have a team, that are, whatever it may be. If the seller senses fear and doubt in you, Fear and doubt that you can deliver the results you're looking for, which is sell for the most money, least amount of time, with the least amount of hassle. What the seller wants and who you are being don't match. There, right there, you, you knock on the door, ring the bell. The way that you show up right there in that moment, they sense. You know, you know how dogs can smell fear? Sellers can smell doubt and fear. Yeah, they could, people feel it. You know, they sense it. Yeah. So what happens? Well, your goals don't match. They have an aggressive goal and you're not showing up that way. And I want you to please write all of this down because you want to remember. The listing presentation, and I'm going to tell you exactly what to do in this listing presentation, every step of the way right here today. The listing presentation, the price or the commission is not going to be the breaking point for you and the reason why you don't take this listing. Who you are being every step of the way is, that will be the breaking, the, the thing that breaks this down and that's it you walk away without a signature okay it's not even necessarily you 
following what I'm going to tell you to do on this listening presentation every step of the way. It's who you're being. Motivated sellers want an aggressive agent. Give them what they want, not what, what you think they want, what they actually want. Okay. Motivated sellers, someone who needs to sell or wants to sell, they're not looking for a, you know, oh, so what do you think? Oh, the, 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 your house is so nice. Oh, you have a dog. I have a dog too. They're not looking for that. Okay. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. If you have any doubt that you can deliver the results that the seller is looking for, or if you think another agent with more experience and a big team and 20 years in real estate can do a better job than you, this listing presentation is over. Sad, but true. So how do you take listings with few or no objections? You want the answer to that? It's like, how do you take listings with few or no objections? I love that. Show up as a confident expert and a knowledgeable leader. That's how you gotta show up every time. I don't care if you're brand new. You gotta, you gotta pump yourself up. You gotta find it within yourself to show up for that 30 minutes or hour that you're there like that confident, expert, knowledgeable leader. And remember, always to focus on what's in it for the seller. What is the seller looking for? And what's in it? Give them what they're looking for, okay? I already said many times what they're looking for. You could go back and, and uh, listen to it again. This will be on my YouTube channel uh, at some point, okay? So we're gonna start. I'm going to give you the first point, but I want to remind you again, $10,000 on the table, your average commission. Is it yours or is somebody else going to take it? Point number one or step one, write down the word mindset. I have to start with mindset. It's impossible. It's my, listen, I'm going to give you other stuff, what to do, how to prepare a CMA, the price, the whole thing. But it has to start with mindset. So I want you to write it down. Prepare your mind on the drive to the appointment. You want to be bombarding your brain. Powerful, positive, motivational, inspirational ideas. You want to pump yourself up for the last few minutes before you show up to the door. Put like the, the, the song that most like gets you like going crazy, excited. You got to pump yourself up. You cannot on the drive to the appointment be, I don't know, talking on the phone with somebody that's complaining or handling an issue. What, what are you doing? Or listening to the news? I mean, does that even, anybody does that these days? I don't know. Probably. This is critical because you have to show up with high energy, high energy, enthusiasm, passion. You gotta be passionate about what you're doing. Remember, people make decisions when they're excited about the future. If you're not excited, how are you gonna get them excited about listening with you? It's not gonna happen. Under this same point number one mindset, what are your expectations? As you knock on the door, do you expect to walk away with a signed listing agreement? Or do you expect that the seller will say, well, I told you over the phone that I'm interviewing other agents. Or I told you over the phone that I don't wanna pay a commission. What are you expecting when you, when you get there? Leave. No doubt that there is no need to speak with any other agent. Leave no doubt that listing with you is the best financial decision they can make. Price and commission objections, or really any objection like, oh, I want to think it, I want to sleep on, I want to think about it. I, you know, I don't want to make decisions quickly. But primarily, because I know price and commission are big ones, price and commission objections come up 
because they don't feel you are the right agent. And this feeling they get, it's, it, it, it starts from the moment you knock on the door. And we're gonna talk about the moment that you knock on the door. That's step number three. But before we get there, let's go to step number two. So the first one is the mindset. Number two is preparation. Now I wanna talk to you a little bit about preparing the market analysis, your CMA to bring with you to the appointment. Because obviously that's very important. When you're preparing a CMA, you're gonna select four active listings and four recent sales within the last six months. And you're gonna select these actives and these closed sales very carefully. And what I mean by carefully is, you want to make sure that you will be able to explain to the seller why you selected these comparables and how are these properties similar somewhat. Sometimes if you're doing a market analysis in a neighborhood where it's all cookie cutter homes, they're all the same, it's easy, but it's not always like that. Sometimes you're doing a CMA and you know the homes are different from one another. And you're still gonna you're gonna have to explain while the while my home is 500 square feet bigger than this one that you're showing me here. So what do you do now? You need for those of you who don't have the experience of having looked at an appraisal, you need to study an appraisal, and you you need to see how appraisers what adjustments they make and how they come up with the appraised values for properties. Because a lot, and preferably look at an appraisal where the properties are, they're obviously similar, otherwise they wouldn't be comparables on an appraisal, but they're not the same. And the appraiser has to adjust for the additional square footage or, or a swimming pool or whatever, okay? And this is critical because you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna have to, help the seller understand what they need to price this property at so that it will sell. And if the, 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 the CMA and the, I, I'm gonna call it comparables that you select to be a part of your CMA is the evidence that you're gonna be showing this seller. So you gotta, you gotta carefully select that, okay? When you are presenting the CMA, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit later about how to have the conversation on price, but when you are presenting the CMA, you need to speak confidently. The entire presentation, I mean, it's not just when you're presenting price, confidently and unapologetic. Why is that important? Because you don't choose the price. It's nothing you can do. Can you imagine how fun being a real estate agent would be if you actually, you got to choose how much property sell for? Wouldn't that be amazing? You have no control. And so don't own the price because you didn't choose it, but you got to provide enough evidence to the seller so that they understand the price. Also under preparation, there's paperwork that you need to bring with you, the listing agreement, all the disclosures that are required in your state or by your broker or whatever, and all of the paperwork. You need to have everything clean and organized. You cannot have like, you know, paper with like little years like that and everything is like a mess. Like what? In, what is going on? Okay. Organize in a folder, everything clean. The listing agreement is completely filled out except for the price ahead of time. This is part of your preparation. You're not going to take the listing agreement in front of the seller at some point and start writing their name and address. You don't do that. When you get there, it's already done. The only 
The only thing on the list when you bring me to not filled out is the price, and I'll talk more about that later. You should, even though I never did when I was selling real estate, but I do recommend that you send out a pre-listing package electronically. This is sent out via email. And this listing, uh, pre-listing package is going to include a little bio about you if you don't, or in your track record, if you are new and you don't have a track record yet, use your company's track record. Talk something about how many homes, how long the company's been around and how many homes were sold in the last six months a year. You gotta come up with something, one page, simple. Don't send out a pre-listing package, it's like 20 pages. Nobody's gonna look at that, okay? One page that's powerful, that's impressive with your track record or your company's track record or combination of both. A brief marketing plan. I'm going to talk about the marketing plan in, in, a, in a little bit, okay? Brief marketing plan. Again, more coming. Do not include the market analysis. That's not part of your pre-listing package. A few testimonials if you have it. Yeah. A one page with three or four testimonials. So it's your track record, your company's track record, a brief marketing plan, and some testimonials. That's it. That'll be three pages, one page each. No CMA and no listing agreement, no disclosures, none, none, none of that, okay? Now, if you're doing a pre listing appointment on Zoom, you're gonna send a pre-listing package as soon as you can electronically. Oh, and by the way, this is what I just told you to include in the pre-listing package. It, sh it's all, it's all, it should be done ahead of time. It's not, whoa, I set an appointment, now I gotta go create this. No, this stuff you should have ready. You just attach you know, to an email and you send it out very easily. If your listing appointment is gonna be on Zoom, then five minutes before the appointment, separate, separate from your pre-listing package, you're gonna send out the market analysis and the listing agreement for electronic signature. If your appointment is in person, you're not gonna send that out. That the, the, the listing agreement and the CMA, you're not sending it out. You're bringing it with you. So that's your preparation. Here's step three or point number three, your arrival at the house. Yay, this is what you've worked for. This is where, this is the moment of truth right here, yeah? Yes, absolutely. I see Jacqueline like rubbing her hand. Yeah, baby, I'm ready to go. Arrival. So I want you to write this down. First impressions are critical. We all know that, right? The old saying, you don't have a second chance to make a great first impression. Because it, it's the first, it's not the second. And it is critical. Look like. You need to look like someone who gets things done. In your attitude, in the way you're dressed, in your posture, in your face, in your expressions, in your body language. You know when you look at somebody and they look like someone who gets things done? That's it. That's how you got to show up. Remember, it's one of their biggest assets. There's a lot of money at stake. They're looking for a successful, aggressive agent. Be early. Be early. Plan to arrive at least 15 minutes early so that if you get caught in a little trap, whatever happens, you got a little bit of cushion with your time. You never want to be late to an appointment. Your car, it's part of first impressions, needs to be clean. It doesn't need to be new. It needs to be clean. 
presentable inside and out. What if you, you, you get to the property and the seller is outside and your car is full of junk ever inside, right? There's stuff all over the place and the seller actually looks, what kind of first impression is that? Some of you are like, oh, she's talking to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you knock on the door. Remember what I said, because I don't want to keep repeating myself because I got a lot of stuff to tell you. Your posture, your facial expressions, a smile on your face. You're about to ring the bell or knock on the door. Shoulders back. You look confident. Yes. Your face looks like you're excited and confident. Firm handshake, firm hand, don't break anybody's hand, but also, you know, not like, oh, you know, a firm handshake, like a professional. Because you are a professional, not like a professional, like the professional that you are. And then you're going to look at the house, right? You're going to come, you're going to introduce yourself. It's a pleasure meeting you. I look forward to getting this property sold for you. Um, would you give me a quick tour of the property? Let them show you the house. Don't tell them, oh, you know, wait here. I'm going to look at the house. No, don't do that. Them taking you through the house. That could take maybe five minutes. It's a great opportunity for you to ask questions and to build rapport with the seller. Unless it's like somebody you know, your best friend, a past client that you know, somebody that you know they're gonna list with you no matter what you do here or what you say, if some, somebody you're very yeah. close to, eh, maybe, but there's no reason for that. It's gonna maybe take five minutes and it will be worth it. Let them show you, ask questions, ask about motivation, etc. While they are showing you the house and you're walking through the property, Walk like a successful real estate agent who gets things done. The seller is looking at you and they're thinking, wow, this person sells houses. You look like the way you talk, everything about you instills confidence in this seller that you, you're going to get things done. You're going to get them what they want. Now, you're at the kitchen table or dining room table, wherever, right after you tour the property. I recommend that you present standing up. The sellers are seller or sellers, they're gonna sit down, you're gonna stand up. That puts you in a position of authority. You're the authority, you're the expert. You're the knowledgeable real estate leader. Stand up in a position of authority. Before, this is the last point in point number three here, which is your arrival. Before you start the next step, you're gonna open your briefcase. You're gonna take out the listing agreement. I have a magazine here. Let's pretend this is the listing agreement. You're going to take out the listing agreement. You're going to put it on the table, right where you are, counter or whatever. You're going to get a pen, put it on top of the listing agreement. Just leave it there. You're not going to say anything. You're just going to take it, take it out, put it there, put the pen. It's a subliminal close. That's it. And it's, it's, it's there. They see what it is. They could read it if they want to, whatever. It's there. You're just going to leave it there. Step number four, you are going, this is simple, you're going to confirm the seller's motivation. And I say confirm because you already asked questions about their motivation when you pre-qualified your appointment. This, this, this webinar is not about pre-qualifying the appointment. This master class is not about pre-qualifying. This is, you're already there. But when you pre-qualified, you ask questions about their motivation. Motivation is where, when, and why. Where, when, and why. Where are they moving to, when, and why. 
So you're going to confirm, oh, Mr. Seller, so when we spoke over the phone, you told me that you're moving to Dallas and you want to be there by end of March, the latest, because you're starting a new job, whatever the story may be, okay? What's important to them? And then you're going to confirm and then you're going to ask them this question. Is there anything else, Mr. Seller, that is important to you about the move that I should know about? Because you're confirming the motivation. Maybe there's something else that they didn't tell you that you didn't ask that would be important. So you're going to ask that question. So step four is very simple. Step five. This is one of my favorites. The marketing plan. After you confirm their motivation, you are going to tell them what you're going to do to sell their house. That's the marketing plan. And the most important thing here is what separates you from every other agent out there? Okay. You're going to hire a professional photographer and you're going to do a virtual tour and uh, you're going to do, I don't recommend you do open houses, but some of you will do open houses and you're going to put it on the internet, millions of websites, and you're going to do, you put a sign in the yard and you're going to do some flyers. I don't know what else, right? That agents do. That's what everyone does. That doesn't separate you from anybody. You're just another agent. What separates you from everybody else is, and that's if you choose to be what I'm gonna say right now, you are an active and aggressive agent. Let's talk about that. What is an active agent? What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, write this down. You should write down everything. I mean, you should be taking notes nonstop, okay? You live, you eat, and you breathe real estate. The seller needs to get that from you, okay? You're not a dog walker. You don't have a doggy daycare. You love pets. You love dogs. You're not a community leader. Yeah, you're not. You're not a professional photographer. You're a real estate agent. That's the only thing you do. That's what your expertise is. You, you, you live, breathe, and eat real estate. Okay? And the seller needs to get that from you. When they look at you and when they think of you, they only associate you with real estate and getting results, period. Doesn't matter like, oh, you like fishing. Oh, real estate, you're a real estate agent. They're about to pay you $10,000 or more to handle their biggest asset. They don't care if you like dogs or if you, whatever else you do, sell their home for the most money possible in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle. That's what they care about. Aggressive agent. You will stop at nothing to get this home sold for the most money in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle because that is what the seller expects. You deliver results, nothing left on the table, nothing left. This is a script I'm gonna give you right now, okay? Mr. Seller, you and I both know that there is a buyer for your house out there. And my job is to go find them. That's what you would expect an agent to do for you, isn't it? 
and the visual, you notice me going like this because my body language matches what I'm saying. I'm not going, that's what you would expect. Isn't it fear, doubt, weird body, like the video and audio don't match? No, it's not how it is. So that's what you would expect an agent to do for you, isn't it? And they're gonna say, yeah. Sounds like you found what you're looking for. Let's go over the price, agree on a price so I can get this house sold for you. That'll be the end of your marketing plan. The question is, how do you stand out? I say to my clients, <clears throat> many of them are here. I trust they could answer this question because they know, they know what separates them. And Jacqueline, I can see, I can't see everybody, but I can see Jacqueline nodding her head. 99.9% .9 of the agents, no matter where you are in this country, they list a house, they put it in the multiple listing, they put it on hundreds or thousands of websites. They may do open houses, professional photos, a flyer, an open house and the virtual whatever, okay? And they sit around for six months hoping and praying that somehow this thing is gonna sell. If it's priced right in this market, it's gonna sell. Even if it's a little overpriced, if prices are going up, which in many parts of the country it is, and you take a six month listing, the market may catch up with your overpriced listing. But if it's, you know, they're just hoping and praying that it will sell, somehow it's just gonna sell. And price is critical. Yeah, we're gonna talk about price in just a minute. But you are active and aggressive because you are prospecting every day. You are looking for sellers every day. Buyers too, you don't want to work with the buyers, but you know, you're going to find some when you're prospecting and then you're going to refer them out for a referral fee and you're going to focus on the listings because you're a listing expert and somebody else is a buyer's expert. So that's another conversation. But that's what you're going to do. You're going to contact the top agents in your market to give them information on your property. You're going to actively, you're going to be on the phone every day talking to 30, 40, 50 people a day about buying and selling real estate. And everybody you talk to, whether it's a FISB and expired, a neighborhood call, at the end of the call, you're going to ask, by the way, Mr. Seller, can you think of anyone who might be looking to buy or sell a home anywhere in our area? And that's how you're looking for people that want to buy and sell. And you're going to stop at nothing. You're going to get this property sold. You're going to negotiate the highest price, the best terms, the inspections, the walkthrough. You're going to take care of everything because it's not just the price that, that will actually, when I say the price, meaning the final sale price of this property, there are a lot of other negotiations that happen with terms and inspections and walkthrough and a lot of other stuff, appraisal issues that may come up. Anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked here, but you get the point. An active and aggressive agent. That's what they're looking for. Someone who is actually looking for people who want to buy and sell homes every day instead of sitting around the office and waiting for an internet lead to come up. Leave no doubt that you are the best agent in this marketplace for them to list their property with. Period. Point number six, presenting the price after you go through the marketing plan. Yeah. So Mr. Seller, you and I both know there's a buyer for your house out there. My job is to go find them. That's what you'd expect an agent to do for you, isn't it? Great. Sounds like you found what you're looking for. Let's go over the price and agree on what is the highest price that we could sell your property for in today's market. Get the paperwork signed so I can go to work for you. And so now it's time for the price. You're going to take out your market analysis. You have four active listings and four recent sales. 
part of the evidence that you should use to help the seller understand the price is the market conditions in general. Now, this is very specific to your market. How many homes are currently for sale? How many sold last month? How many are expiring? That gives you, it gives you, and of course, when you present this to the seller, a sense of what's happening, how many supply, how many months supply of homes are on the market right now. So that could be very important. If you're in an incredibly hot market, which is one month supply of homes in the market, and that might not be necessary, might not help you uh, price this home correctly today because you know sometimes seller are like well prices have been going up so we can overprice it a little and i said about uh, a few minutes ago i said in some cases if that is actually happening the market may catch up with the price if you if you don't take a short listing but there's always some danger with that because you don't know you know I said in the beginning, I don't know what the point was, never own the price. So when presenting the price, write this down, never own it. Never say to a seller, well, I am confident that at $399, we can get your house sold quickly. Never say that. Right? You have no control over the price. Today, based on everything that you're looking at and this market analysis and these recent sales, $399 may look like an excellent price and the home is going to be the next one to sell in the area. But can you be sure that that wouldn't change tomorrow? No, you cannot. Because tomorrow, another property may be listed for sale that's very similar to their house and it's listed at Three three fifty nine, and overnight your listing just is overpriced, and there's nothing you can do. You don't control what other people list their house for, unless you're the listing agent. They might have some control. You don't. A, a pending sale might have closed, and all of a sudden it closed for a much lower price. So you didn't know. Now you go do an updated CMA, and you're like, "Oops, okay, it looks like it's overpriced." So never own the price. And this is actually a conversation that you can have with the seller at some point so they understand that you're going to be keeping them informed with what might change in the market. So presenting the price, you're going to take them through each of the actives and recent sales that you selected, the comparables in this market analysis, one by one. And you're going, I, I said earlier, as part of your preparation, when you're preparing this market analysis, you need to be very careful on the, the properties that you choose. Because now you're going to have to explain this to the seller. And if they're all very, if they're all exactly the same, and sometimes they are, no, it's easy. But like, when are comparables, actives and closed sales exactly the same? Even if it's the same number of bedrooms and baths and same model and same square footage, the condition is never the same. And that's what sellers tend to pick on. Well, my house is better than this one. You know, I, I painted this room or I put a new roof, which is a maintenance item anyhow, but this isn't like a new roof. Oh, great. So you don't, your roof is not leaking. Wow, your home is worth more money. But, you know, sellers think like that. They don't know. I'm making fun, but it's like, you know, like I used to think like that too before I got into real estate. You need to be able to explain you. Okay, here's how this works. Your job when you're discussing price with the seller is not to tell them what the price should be. Your job is to help them understand how you came to the conclusion that you came to as to what the price should be. That's your job. You came, when you walk in the house, you have an idea of price. Rarely do you look at the house and that changes. It shouldn't, right? It could, that's an exception. We were not gonna base uh, what you do on exceptions. If you did your job, if you did everything the way that you're supposed to, you walk in, you see the house, and before you walked in, you 
you thought the price is, is going to sell for about 350 so it's it's about 350 your job is to present each of the comparables patiently and slowly explain the items that make a difference in the price or not and the adjustments that could be made if there are differences in the home and help them understand how you came to the conclusion that this house is worth 350 that's your job and remember you're a confident expert and a knowledgeable leader they're not in charge you are you're the real estate agent. They're just a homeowner. I don't care if they're a Fisbo and they think they know every, they're everything. If they know more than you do, then you're wasting your time going on this appointment. If you're not confident that hiring you is the best decision that any seller can make, you're wasting your time on this listing presentation. The price will not dictate whether you take this listing or not. How you present yourself and the price throughout this entire appointment is what's going to dictate whether you take the listing or not. And then step number seven is getting the signature on this listing agreement that's been sitting here the whole entire time here's been sitting here with a pen on top of it okay now it's time once you agree on a price and they may have some objections whatever okay you agree on a price you have the listing agreement the price is blank so how you're gonna ask for the signature you're gonna, the listing, I'm, I'm holding it up so you could see, okay? So it, it's sitting on the table or the counter and you're gonna, you're gonna say to the seller, great, Mr. Seller, let's go ahead and price your home at $3.99. And as I'm saying it, I'm writing it down in a shade, I'm nodding, I'm smiling. And let's go ahead and price your home at $3.99 because you already agreed. I just need your signature right here right here until they pick up the pen and sign that's it it's so easy you're not gonna go over the price agree on a price they may have some price of that well but my home is better oh but blah, 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 blah. okay price objections but if you have good evidence and you explain and you show the evidence shouldn't be that complicated at all. They could still have an objection or two on price because every homeowner wants more money for the house than the house is worth. But once you agree on a price, you don't like, well, so, so what do you think? Remember what I said? Time and time again, yeah? Motivated sellers want an aggressive agent, a leader, an expert, someone who's confident. You don't get to the end of your appointment. You go like, well, you, what do you think? What do you think? Like, what kind of clothes is that? You filling in the price and asking them to sign is, is it should be like a seamless process. You know, it's just, it's what happens next. This listing agreement has been sitting here this whole entire time. That's all there is to be done. And when you Point to the signature line, you hand them the pen, you have a smile on your face. Don't speak. Now there's no, nothing else to say. It's just, and they may, you know, some, they, sometimes they just like, you know, it's a big decision. And sometimes they just like, they, they kind of, you know, hold back for a moment. If it's two people, I, I, I mean, I used to see this all the time. It's so fun. If it's two of them, you know, they can't, you know, I'm, I'm there like handing them the pen, asking them to sign. They like look at each other, like they, and one of them grabs the pen and signs. And then the other, and I was like, hey, everybody's happy. But if you start talking, you, 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 you mess it all up. Okay. You put your foot in your mouth and you mess it up. It's just the natural thing for them to do. Now. What do you do if they don't sign? 
they give you an objection. Well, if you pre-qualify the appointment well enough, okay, that's not the topic of this at all, but if you pre-qualify it well, you gather the information, you know what questions and objections they have, and it has been all handled already, and you show up the way that I've described to you for the past almost hour here, they shouldn't have any objections. They should be ready to go. But in case they do, if they do have a question, you know, sometimes sellers, commission is one, right? I've experienced this many times where they will ask, well, what is your commission? My commission, whatever your commission is, okay? My, I used to charge 6%, so, so my commission is 6%. And they would say, well, you know, so-and-so said they would do it for, you know, less. Can you, can you do it for less? No, Mr. Seller, my commission is 6%. Let's go ahead and get the paperwork signed so I can go to work for you and get this house sold. Just like that. And then they would pick up the pen, sign, and say, I just thought I'd ask. So with that, you know, the commission objection, you don't want to start throwing the entire kitchen sink at them. I mean, the first thing, you, when they, if they ask, you just, this is what it is. Whatever yours is, whatever you charge. I said it was me, but whatever. Yeah, you just say what it is and ask them to sign again. If they give you different objections, I'm not going to, my goal with, 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 this hour that I spend with you today is to tell you what you need to do and how you need to do it so you don't get objections. If you do it right, you won't. But if they give you an objection, you handle it and you ask them to sign again. They give you another one, you ask, the end when you ask them to sign, it's the same thing, Mr. Seller, blah, 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 you blah, blah, blah. This is what you're looking for. Let's get this done right. I just need your signature right here. And you do that over and over until, listen, either they're going to sign the contract or they're going to throw you out of the house. And it's okay if they throw you out. So what, are you going to leave willingly without asking for the signature, without handling objections and leave $10,000 for somebody else? Yes, that's what you're doing. Not that if you walk out the door, it doesn't mean you're not going to take the listing. I mean, you could and you should follow up and, you know, there's stuff you, you're going to do, but the chances of you taking the listing go down dramatically the minute you walk out that door. You could still do it, but right now is obviously when you have the highest probability of getting this done. Hey, uh, if you want to listen to this again, uh, I don't know when, it might be in the next couple of days, you'll be on my YouTube channel. It's just Jackie Kravitz. That's the name of the channel. If you uh, have not subscribed yet, go on YouTube, find the channel, and you'll find this webinar there uh, in the next couple of days. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Jackie. Great.